Very much, fellas, once again. I think of all the people here today for the Dusty Baker press conference, nobody knows him better or has more experiences and stories about Dusty than FP. And you've been with him as a player, and, and you know what kind of a guy he is, and you could probably talk for an hour about this hire of Dusty Baker. I could, and it's exactly what this organization, this ball club in this city needs right now. I mean, he's, he exudes positive He's all about fun. He's all about winning, number one. But the atmosphere that he creates for the player to get the best out of every single player and pushing every player's buttons however he does it is as good as anybody I've ever seen. And, and he does it one-on-one. -on -one. We used to call it getting called into the principal's office. He'd call us into his office and he'd say, I need you to tell him to do this. And he just delegates with uh, among the players in a way that, that, that I've never seen before. And I, and I always tell this story, Johnny. On road trips, he comes back in the back of the plane, which a lot of managers don't do. That's a player's Up sanctuary. Sure. He comes in the back mm -hmm. and he tells you, hey, you got the second game in New York, the third game in Philadelphia, the second game in Pittsburgh, so get your sleep on those nights before those. And as a bench player, he would let you know when you're playing. And for a bench player, that's everything. You walk in the clubhouse every day, you don't know when you're playing. You look at that lineup card, am I in there today? And he's such a good communicator that he would give you the the, the honor of knowing when you're playing in order to get yourself ready for and that And you had mentioned earlier the fact that he treats the 25th guy on the roster just like he does the big superstar. And that's great. He, he does. And you'll see this year with the Nats, guys getting rest. You'll see guys with Sunday day games off after Saturday night games. He won't run the everyday guys into the ground. He believes that if he throws out the B team on a Sunday game that they're all major leaguers, mm -hmm. and they still have every bit of a chance to win that game as if he threw all the guys out there that were tired from the, the night game before. So you'll see a fresher uh, Bryce Harper in September. You'll see a, 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 a fresher Ryan Zimmerman and Jason Wirth and the horses that grind every single day come September when you know sometimes you hit the wall as a player those guys will be fresh and, and he's really good at communicating hey you need a day off do you need a day off don't be yeah. afraid to sometimes guys are afraid to ask for a day off but Dusty will ask you do you need a day off and it's okay with him as a manager to say yeah I need a day skip and he also admitted this is the fact that this ball club may be the best that he's ever managed coming into Washington yeah, I mean... He's he, managed some good ones. That's a bold statement. That, I mean, he I, said that. He's I managed know. some pretty good ball clubs. He went to the World Series with the 2002 San Francisco Giants, and, you know, th that whole thing kind of went wacky there at the end. But, you know, he's won three divisions. Um, he, he's won Manager of the Year three times. He's come in second for Manager of the Year uh, three more times. So this is a guy with a great resume, and... and I, I, I'm excited because I have a friend as the manager of the yes. Washington Nationals. He lives about six miles from my home in California. We do things together in the off season all the time. Um, we go to the Kings games. Uh, we go out to dinner. So uh, I'm really excited to have him here. And, and, and not just from a bias standpoint. I, I think however it happened, you, you know, everyone talking about how the whole process went. There's a big elephant in the room today, how, how, this whole Bud Black, Dusty Baker thing. If you remember back uh, in September or, or in July in the trade deadline, the Mets uh, acquired Gomez from the Brewers. They traded Zach Wheeler away. They traded Wilmer Flores mm -hmm. away. He was crying at shortstop. And then that didn't work out. The Mets had egg on their face for a couple of days. Then they got a guy named Cespedes and went to the World Series. So this, all this drama that's been going around this ball club, I feel like no one's going to remember it in June when this team's in first place. We also place. talk about having a clubhouse, FP. And boy, Dusty Baker owns the clubhouse. He does, but I, I wouldn't say owns. I, I would say is a big influence. Mm -hmm. He likes to let his players police themselves. Mm -hmm. So, But he does it in ways that are just, I mean, I guess magical for lack of a better word. It's just like, hey, Johnny, I need you to tell Ray this. Or, you know, he... he, he or FP, you tell Bob yeah, this. Yeah, instead of going straight to the guy and making it a big production yeah. in a big meeting that, hey... Hey, I need you to tell this guy that and see what he responds and come back. The way he goes about it uh, through years and years of experience, um, and it's the way he manages too. Seat of his pants, he's not. He doesn't have a formula. He just goes out there and believes what his eyes tell him on that given day, based on a lot of experience. And one thing Mike Rizzo said: I want a manager with experience. Boy, has he got one. And the whole thing, I mean, did you see the superstars he was reeling yeah. off that he's managed? Sammy Sosa. Barry, Clark, Barry yeah. Bonds, Will <laughs> Clark, Kevin Mitchell. I mean, F.P. Santangelo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joey Votto. Um, and it, it, that, that plays. I mean, he's, sure there's right. resume, that, that, that resume, there's credential. Um, and and I'm, I'm really excited to see the staff he brings in. So far, we know, too, Mike Maddox, yep. a former teammate of mine in Montreal and uh, with the Dodgers, is a smart and bright, intelligent, uh, forward-thinking, 
leading pitching coach there is in the game. Another guy's not bad either. And some guy named Davey Lopes. Is <laughs> some guy, some yeah. Some guy yeah, named exactly. Davey Lopes. Is I'm excited, aren't you? Very much so. And yeah. I think I think that, that that all Nats fans should be excited. And this just isn't the company line. This comes from personal experience. I mean, we, we'd be excited about anybody moving forward. That's what you do in life. You, you know, the new guy, whoever it was, we were going to be excited about it because it's changed and things weren't good before. Right. I, mean, I don't care how you put it. There was a bad vibe around here. And now you have somebody that is all about good vibes and creating a good environment, not just for the players, for us, for everybody that works behind the scenes. From, like he said, from from the lowest guy on the totem pole to to to, to Mr. Lerner, he makes everybody feel like they're important. Great day here at National Spark, and we hope you folks are really enjoying our mass and coverage today. You're going to be around all winter, aren't you? I am. Yeah, I live here. You're not going to go now. out to California? Oh, at the holidays, go okay. home and see the kids. That's good. We'll maybe, see. maybe I'll be be invited to a Maryland game once in a while. We can work that <laughs> out. I know the athletic director. I know, yeah. Let's send it back to you guys in the studio.